What's up everybody? My name is Gilbert Church. I'm a high school strength and conditioning coach. I'm a PE teacher in Harlem and today we are going to be talking about sleep and particularly why a lot of people struggle to sleep and what we can do to fix those problems. Because in the greater context of building muscle, which is what this channel is really all about, helping people on their fitness journey, helping that high schooler that's looking for a little bit of extra performance on the athletic field, we need to know sleep and we need to know it inside and out because it is by far the most important thing we do in our lives when it comes to our mood, our performance, how we feel, and everything and all above. So let's start talking about the struggles and let's start talking about why we struggle and then let's talk about some solutions that we can explore to improve the quality of our sleep. Let's get to it. So. Many of you have probably experienced some sort of struggle with sleep. You've had a bad night of sleep before, and if you haven't, you're incredibly lucky, and you probably will experience it somewhere down the line. And to understand why this happens, what we need to do is take a little look at our evolution and how our biology has evolved with us over the course of millions of years. Because I want you to think about it this way. Before the light bulb, which was only 150 years ago, we had millions of years of evolving with the sun as it came up and with the sun as it went down. In fact, circadian rhythm is just simply your body's natural sleep-wake cycle that happens around a 24-hour rotation of the earth. So again, before artificial light, the sun would come up, the light would hit your skin, it would hit your eyes, your body would send hormones throughout your body saying, okay, it's time to wake up. It's time to gather some food, it's time to protect, the, to protect the tribe, time to go hunting, anything that those things sort of happen during that time. And then when the sun would start to creep down, we're not nocturnal creatures, we can't see at night, the body would start sending signals to start going to sleep. This is the time to recover. This is the time where we need less activity because we can't do as many things during the night. We've had millions and millions of years of getting used to sun exposure where our body takes in some of the sunlight. In fact, that's one of our main sources of vitamin D. And then our body gets used to that. And then when the sun goes down, our body will send hormones out like melatonin and growth hormone to signal that it's time to go to bed. Enter the light bulb. It ruined everything. Okay, I take that back. The light bulb is awesome, right? It's the reason we can go out and party at night. It's the reason surgeons can work on someone if they get hit by a car at 12 a.m. in the middle of the night. Uh, there's a lot of great stuff about a light bulb, obviously. But in terms of our sleep, it was sort of the beginning of the end of this beautiful relationship we had to the sun. You no longer had to wait for the sun to come up to do things. So you could stay up all night with this light shining into your eyes and you had the opportunity to work on things. Also, our bodies started responding differently to light. There was no reason to go outside as much anymore because you suddenly had all these internal spaces that could be so well lit with artificial light. Now, the problem with that was we weren't getting any sun exposure and taking in any of that vitamin D or getting any of those signals from the sun that tells us, hey, it's time to wake up. Hey, it's time to go to sleep. And in a modern society, like forget the light bulb, now we're looking at screens this close to our faces all the time with our phone or watching Netflix or watching TV. Uh, and all those signals are going awry because we actually don't have the biological equipment yet to deal with looking at screens shining blue light at us as hard as they can whenever we're trying to do things. What's really, really interesting when we're talking about the struggles of sleep is that there's this relationship between us and the sun and we've lost a lot of that relationship. And as cool as artificial light is, artificial light is actually one of the main reasons that America and the world in general is struggling to get good quality sleep because our circadian rhythms have been completely kicked by this new crazy thing called artificial light. And it's only been multiplied and, and, and exponentially risen by the fact that we watch screens all day long now. So, simple question, why we can't sleep? Complex answer, a lot of history behind it, but hopefully that's given you a little bit of insight into why some people struggle to sleep. 
Now, let's start talking about some common fixes and some common good habits that we can do to help us get back to sleep and get a better quality night when we go to it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my four rules for excellent sleep at night. First thing that you need to do is have a dark room. How dark? I'm talking freakishly dark. I'm talking Egyptian tomb dark. I'm talking you raise your hand in front of your face at night in your room and you cannot see the back of your hand. That's how dark we're talking. You sleep with the nightlight, get rid of it. If there's light creeping in from your windows, do everything you can to minimize it. If there's a light that creeps in from underneath your door, stick a sweater underneath there. Try and eliminate any source of light that is in your room when you are about to go to sleep. It affects how you sleep. It's crazy stuff. Two, the room should be slightly cool. Slightly cool. We're not talking cold, but we're not talking hot. Everyone has these massive cozy uh, 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 comforters that people sleep with at night. And if you overheat at night, chances are you're going to wake up and you are going to disrupt your sleep cycle because you're overheating. Remember, sun went down a million years ago, earth got cooler at night. You wanna simulate that nice cool environment. Number three, sun exposure. Like we talked about with circadian rhythm, when you're awake during the day, you're getting sun on your skin, you're getting sun in your eyeballs. That's the real stuff. It's tough to replicate that. In schools that have no windows, we are consistently under artificial lights that don't actually replicate real sunlight. You need the real stuff for your body to sort of signal, okay, right now is daytime, and then if you can do yourself a favor and look at the sun as it's setting, don't look directly at the sun, but be outside when the sun is setting, that's going to signal your body to create some melatonin, some sleepy hormones that are gonna help you out, and that will help trigger you to get a better night of sleep. Try and get some sun exposure every single day in the morning, in the middle of the day, and at night. It helps. And then finally, this one's huge. Wake up and go to bed at the exact same time every day. This can be a tough follow through. I know because I get up at 5.30 every morning and I get on a commute, uh, a six o'clock train to get to my job by 7.38 in the city. And when I get to the weekend, I really do, I wanna sleep in. But I've found if I still wake up at the same time and I go to bed at the same time, even on the weekend, my sleep cycle isn't disrupted, my body's in this great rhythm, and I just feel way better, and my sleep has a much higher quality to it, because my body knows when it's time to wake up and when it's time to go to bed. The final piece I'll say on that is, ideally, you're somewhere between 10 and 6 a.m. Why? Because in real life, that's about when the sun goes down and when the sun comes up. Now, obviously that changes with time zones, your location to the equator and stuff like that. But again, you're trying to mimic when the sun goes down and when the sun comes up. You can go to bed at two o'clock and wake up at 10, but it's not going to be the same quality of sleep because again, you're not copying the sunlight. What you need is the same time, hopefully mimicking the sun and making sure that you are consistent with this sleep schedule. These are my four basic rules for getting some great sleep. There's other things you can do, but if you haven't started with this, start there. So I'll end with this fun fact about sleep. The Guinness Book of World Records will accept, will accept your submission for juggling chainsaws. Cool, right? Wicked, crazy dangerous. Do you know what the Guinness Book of World Records will not accept on the basis of it being too dangerous? How many days you can go without sleep? Chainsaws, juggling, they'll accept that. How many days you can go without sleep? They won't accept it. Because if you go past the three or four day mark without any sleep, guess what happens? You literally die. That's how fundamental sleep is. That's how important it is. And if you're not doing everything to maximize the quality of that sleep, what are you doing? It's so important to everything that we do in life, whether it's building muscle, whether it's feeling good, whether it's working well, whether it's having a great relationship with all the people around you, it is literally that important. It is the basis of everything we do. Chase great quality sleep to the ends of the earth because the dividends are 
but no less. If you liked any of the content or any of the words that were said today, please drop a like, please drop a subscribe, and until then, I will see you next time.